Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a review on a knife that I've had, oh lord, since probably around somewhere between 2011, 2012 I'd say. Um, this knife is a little bit bigger than what I normally like to carry. Uh, I usually like my knives to have somewhere between about a somewhere around a four to a five inch blade. Now granted I've got this knife and several others that are larger than that but they're normally not my go-to knives when I go to the woods. This knife though is not only designed as a woods knife it's also got a little bit of a twist to it where it's designed as a combat knife. And the knife that I'm talking about is the Topps Praether War Buoy. Now, that being said, it's also a plus when you can buy a knife that has your name on it. So, that's a good thing. But, before we get into it, let me explain. I did not design this knife. It just so happens the guy who did design this knife has the same last name as I do. Uh, the guy who designed this knife, his name is Jeff Prather. Uh, I've spoke to him a time or two, and from what I've gathered talking to him, he grew up over around, uh, I think he said Paints Lick, Paintsville, somewhere here in Kentucky. But uh, he has a military background as well as a martial arts background. And when we start talking about this knife and looking at it, you'll be able to see some of that coming into it. <clears throat> so let's get into this. First thing right off the bat, I'll go ahead and let you know, this is not the sheath that this knife come with. This knife come with the typical black nylon plastic liner ballistic sheath that was pretty much standard on all tops knives back in the 2010-2012 era and anybody who I know who have used one back then will tell you they just do not hold up they come apart so that being said mine come apart and I ended up making me a leather one for it now I have used this knife enough that the finish has come off of it and I ended up just stripping it down and bluing the blade with gum blue. <clears throat> now, overall length on this knife is 12 and 5 eighths. That puts it somewhere close to the size of a USMC K-Bar combat knife. The blade length on this is seven and a quarter inches. It is a quarter inch thick and the blade design's a little unique and we'll get into that. It has that typical buoy clip point on it. The only thing different is this is a really deep clip. It comes way back on the spine more so than a standard buoy knife. It does have some jimping here at the top. It's very very mild. It works really well but if you look at it it's not real aggressive, it's not real deep or anything like that. So it's comfortable. The handle is black linen micarta. It does have tops, Rocky Mountain tread on it. That tread pattern is incredible. The wetter this handle gets, the grippier it becomes, especially with the way this pattern is put on there. It does have red liners on the handles. Uh, it does have a lanyard hole at the back. If you look at the handle, and this is what I was talking about earlier, this is where a lot of his influence come into this. The handle is thinner here at the neck than it is at the butt. And the reason for that is in a combat standpoint, if you're holding that knife and your hands are wet or bloody and you stab somebody, when you go to pull back, where it flares out and gets wider, it gives you a better grip on the draw. So you can pull back with it and not have to worry about the thing sliding out of your hand. This 
blade actually forms a guard on the front. I love that because there's absolutely positively no way, no how, no matter what you're doing, that you're going to get your hand to slide up on that blade with this. Now, that being said, if you're doing a lot of fine carving with it and you're holding it up tight like that and you're carving, it will bite into your finger and make it sore and make it red. It won't rub a blister, but it will, after long periods of use, make your finger sore. And how I know that is I made a walking stick out of cedar after it was dried and seasoned. I actually used this knife to shave all of the bark off of it and in doing so that's when I <laughs> started getting a sore finger. But that being said it's not unbearable and if you're wearing gloves you won't have any issues whatsoever with it. <clears throat> this knife will process game. I've cleaned several deer with it. It does have enough mass that it chops fairly well. It'll chop through a pelvis bone of a deer without any issues. Uh, it will baton very, very well. Uh, whittles, feather sticks, does all of that stuff. And it's also, with that long blade, you can actually grab it and use it as a draw knife to take bark off if you need to. There's enough real estate out here that you can hook your fingers over it and use it as a draw knife. Now... One thing I will tell you, and one thing that I like about this, is the tip design. This thing has an incredibly, let me get my hand up here, fine, fine tip. Not only does it come to a fine point, but when you look at it this way, it tapers to a really fine point. Now, what I was talking about with the blade design... It lends itself to combat very well. It does good from a bushcraft, woodscraft point of view. But this blade is a quarter inch thick. And I don't know if it'll show up very well. There we go. But if you notice, it's got a bevel all along on both sides. Now, the funny thing about that is back here, it's a quarter inch thick. When this bevel starts... This line, if you follow that line, all the way out to about right there, maintain, it maintains its thickness all the way out to there. So this knife stays a quarter inch thick all the way out to within an inch, inch and a half of the tip before it starts tapering down to the tip. That makes this blade very, very strong. It is made out of 1095. It is Rockwell to 56 or to 58. The knife itself weighs 14.4 ounces. The knife with the nylon sheath weighs 19.2 ounces. Now, I'm not sure what it weighs with the leather sheath, but that being said, it surely won't be much over that. Uh, the knife itself, here, let me get my SE5 down for size comparison. When you compare it to the SE5, get you a little more here. The handle length is very, very close to the same. Both of them are quarter inch thick. Now, granted, the SE5 carries it way closer to the tip than the Prather War Buoy, but that's got to do with the design of the two knives and what they were designed for. But Comparing it to the SE5, you can see there is a whole lot of difference in the length between the two. So, <clears throat> normally the SE5 is about as big as I'd like to go for a general purpose knife. That being said, if I was going to a situation to where I would need a combat knife as well as a bushcraft, woodscraft knife, this would be my choice. Uh, I've carried this a lot, I've used it a lot, and I love it. It's just the seven and a quarter inch blades, just a little more than I like. I'm a whole lot more comfortable with the shorter blades when it comes to making traps and stuff like that. 
I'll try to get out and get some video of using this knife for everything but the combat purpose and let you see what I'm talking about with it. With the way this knife is designed when it comes to processing game, I do love the fact that you can hold that knife in your hand and get way up and actually put a fingertip on that and do that and use that knife in that fashion, holding it like that and kind of using that tip. And with doing that, it's not awkward with that big long handle hanging out the back side. It's still balanced very well. It's light in the hand. It's very quick in the hand when you're using it, if you were using it in a combat situation. I carry this knife sometimes with me when I go to work. I've actually used it on a couple of occasions to put down deer that have been hit with uh, a car or something like that. The blade length is very, very well at penetrating and doing what needs to be done in that situation to put them out of their misery. But overall, it's a great knife. I probably should use it a whole lot more than I do. I've been throwing around the idea of trying to get uh, some stag and make a set of stag handles for this. Don't know if I'm going to do that yet, but I've been throwing that idea around. <clears throat> I hope you found this interesting. Sorry about the shakiness. The tripod moved on me as I was trying to redirect. <clears throat> like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think this thing would look like with a set of stag grips on it, stag scales, and we'll go from there. By all means, Google Jeff Prather on the internet and read up on him. I believe he runs a school called the Warrior School, and he does training of all types on there. Definitely check him out. Once you read some more about it, you'll see why this knife is designed the way he designed it. So, like I said, hope you found it interesting. I'll get another one out here shortly. Y'all have a good night.